Hi guys, my name is Morgan and this is the first book video that's going to be on my channel which is henceforth going to be probably mostly about books. This video is going to be what I read in March and April. I could go what I read the first four months but in all honesty I didn't read any books in January or February and that's because I really didn't read. Since like I was a junior in high school my reading has kind of like fallen off sharply and I kind of really got back into it in March, like the first week of March. I was on spring break and I didn't have anything to do so I decided to read some books and I really really loved it. It reminded me how much I enjoy and adore reading and since then I've read um, quite a few books. How many? Um, 12 books I've read. I'm gonna be breaking this video into books I read for school and then books I read for fun. So I'm going to start with books I read for school. So this semester I took a class called LGBTQ Novels of the 21st Century, which like the name implies is about books that deal with LGBTQ themes and, and like queer characters. I said trans characters because that's what the first one's about. So yes there were two books in this class that i should have read before this one so this is little fish by casey plett i gave it three stars this book is about a trans woman in winnipeg uh, canada who finds out that her late grandfather might have also been a trans woman um, that happens towards the beginning and then the rest of the book is like her dealing with that information as well as other things going on in her life I really like her as a character. I didn't really like the end of this book, but that's just like my opinion. Other people could disagree. One thing that's really interesting about this book is that this is a trans narrative by a trans woman that isn't about like the coming out or transitioning process. At the time of this book, Wendy, the main character, has already come out. She came out eight years ago. She started transitioning eight years ago, so she's already fully kind of realized um, as like a trans person, which is really fun to watch, like read. The second book I read for class was Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn. I gave this two stars and I hated reading it, but I wouldn't not recommend it because the main character of this book is asexual, and that is central to her identity, it's central to the plot, and the representation of that is like not bad. However, I personally didn't enjoy the writing style or the plot. I thought it was like, yes, it's supposed to be fluffy. It's like a young adult romance, but it was just all fluff with nothing in between. I didn't feel like the characters were really fleshed out. I didn't feel like there really were more than two characters. Technically, there's four characters that are like main characters, but only the main character, Alice, is really like fleshed out in any grounded way. The next book I read for class was Less by Andrew Sean Greer. So Less won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction novels in 2018, which is like crazy because this is a comedy. It's not a very serious novel. Um, it's about a gay man who is approaching his 50th birthday and has decided that rather than go to the wedding of his ex-lover, he is going to travel around the world going to different like literature events that, he, that he's been invited to. Um, I gave it four stars. I really, really enjoyed it. I think I might have enjoyed it more than I would have because I read it right after reading this. Um, but the writing in this is beautiful it's like full of yearning and it's so earnest and I really really enjoyed the main character I highly recommend this book um, yeah it's very cute it's really cute lastly I read Adam by Ariel Schrag so this book is complicated when you just read the synopsis, it sounds very malicious and like right off the bat, I was like, this is book is gonna be terrible. I'm gonna hate it. It's just like trash um, because it's about a 17 year old cis heterosexual white teenage boy. He pretends that he is a trans man in order to date a girl 
that is part of his sister's like heavily queer social group. I liked it. I gave it four stars. I would never just recommend this to someone out of the blue just to read on their own. I would always recommend that people read this together that so that they can discuss like the reasons that this is problematic. I would never want somebody to read this just like in a vacuum on their own. The conversation that this book prompts is like really enjoyable because it's so controversial and maybe not controversial but it's so polarizing. So people have vastly different opinions on it and that kind of conversation is really fun. Um, I actually liked the way this was written. I thought it was a really fast read. You get really angry at parts while you're reading it because you just know that what's happening is wrong. But at the same time, I can really like this book without liking the main character, the protagonist. And I would recommend that people check this out if they have a group of people who are interested in reading this as well. So that wraps it up for the books I read for class. And now I'm gonna get to the books I read for fun. first book I read for my own pleasure this year was The Virgin's Lover by Philippa Gregory. I give this one star. So what a way to kick off the year, am I right? Um, I was really disappointed in this book because Philippa Gregory wrote like The Queen's Fool and The Other Bowling Girl, which are two books that I loved. Um, of course, I read them like five years ago, six years ago, so I don't really know if maybe I'm just older, but this book is so painful to read. The writing is just as good as it always is. The research and the historical accuracy is just as good as it always is, but this book has not one character that you want to fulfill their character arc. This book is about the first three, four years of Queen Elizabeth I's reign. So the main character is Robert Dudley, who was a childhood friend of Queen Elizabeth, and once she returns to the throne, he goes to court and kind of starts an affair with her. And it's about him and his ambition. It's about Elizabeth trying to deal with the uprising in Scotland. And it's about Robert's wife, dealing with the fact that her husband is cheating on her. But none of the characters are likable. None of them. Robert Dudley is infuriatingly self-centered. Amy Dudley, her entire being and self is completely dedicated to her husband's attention, which doesn't really make her fun to read as a female character. And Queen Elizabeth is like the whiniest, most indecisive, infuriating, like, frustrating little girl in this. She cannot make a decision. The number of times that she's written just wringing her hands, unable to like make a choice, it's infuriating. I literally, I read this when I was on vacation and I was at my friend's house and she was like asking me if I was okay because I was like muttering to myself in like anger as I read this. So I would not recommend. I don't know if I would read another Philippa Gregory book. I really love Queen Victoria and I have a couple of Victoria, like Queen Victoria biographies at home that I've read when I was younger and loved and she has some books about Queen Victoria that I was that I thought I was going to try and pick up when I picked this up. So I don't know. I'm going to look at the ratings because yikes. Um, but yeah, that's that. The next book I read I actually don't have with me because it was my friend's and it was at her house and it was The Prince of Midnight by Laura Kinsale and I gave it three stars on Goodreads but that's kind of like a complicated rating so it's a romance it's like your classic trashy romance which I love and will defend but it was definitely old I'm pretty sure it was written in the 80s and it definitely had some of those classic romance like super toxic vibes of like kind of like a salty scenes and like overly masculine people that are trying to like buff up their reputation or something I don't really know but the actual like pl mystery plot I enjoyed a lot so I don't know if I would like recommend that book because it's just like uncomfortable to read and there are some scenes that could absolutely be triggering but the mystery was so interesting that I kept reading it. 
So The Prince of Midnight is about a girl who goes to France to find this man who used to be a legendary highway robber. She wants him to teach her how to act like his like old legendary persona so that she can enact justice on the people in her hometown who killed her family. And that plot line was super interesting. Not to mention that it did play with tropes of like masculinity because the main hero actually is the one that is constantly, not constantly, but is more emotional in his pursuit of the other character, which is interesting because that's usually totally opposite. You know, all the men are like planks of wood when it comes to their emotions. So that was really interesting to read. Up next was Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo, and I gave this five stars. I loved it. I used to love like fantasy when I was like at the height of my reading and so this was really just a joy to read. I so loved it. I've never read a Leigh Bardugo book before so I haven't read the what is it called Shadow and Bone trilogy but I want to read the Shadow and Bone trilogy before I read the sequel to this book which is The Crooked Kingdom. I think Thoughts on Tomes said this but she was like some of the characters from the Smoke and Bone trilogy show up in Crooked Kingdom and while it's not necessary to know what the stories behind them are. She says that she would have been more excited to see them had she known their background, which I completely agree. So I want to do that order of reading, but this book is about a motley crew of criminals who each have their own special skills who set out to do an impossible heist. Um, this imagery and the atmosphere in this book is amazing. I loved it. I think that there's a lot of instances of the narration telling us how dark and morally gray the character is, like the characters are without actually demonstrating that in realistic ways. But I also can excuse that as this being YA and also the fact that you do hear multiple inner thoughts because it's from multiple perspectives and you can see how conflicted people are about their own decisions. I really enjoyed this. Next I read Rebellious Desire by Julie Garwood. I actually really like Julie Garwood's like Scottish Highlands romances, like The Bride, The Wedding, The Gift, all of her Scottish books I really enjoy. This one is English, so it's a little different, but it's the same thing basically. Um, this book I gave three stars I think maybe two the characters start out so strong and it is just a downhill of disappointment from there the first chapter the heroine uses her sharpshooting skills to save a man from being robbed on the highway which like super badass she only picks up a gun again one time this entire book and it's in a scene that doesn't matter and I was so disappointed because that is such a cool skill for a main character to have, especially in the time that this is set, which I believe this book is set in 1802. Yes, 1802. Um, the main hero is also insufferable. Like, insufferable. He's condescending. He's misogynistic. He's just the worst. I hated him. Every single time he was in a scene, I got so frustrated because... He was insistent that he didn't need to tell the, her the heroine any part of his plans, like to save her, to keep her safe. She's the one in danger, idiot. Oh my God. And I was also a little disappointed because the mystery, so my favorite type of romance is one that has a sub mystery plot. Usually it's a murder mystery, which I love. But this one was started out really interesting and it had the most anticlimactic reveal and then it's just wrapped up in like two pages. It was just really not my fave. Up next, I read the All Souls trilogy by Deborah Harkness, which is a discovery of witches, Book of Shadows, nope, Shadow of Night. These are library books, so I don't really have the covers. And then the Book of Life. So I gave a discovery of which is four stars. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't quite what I was expecting. It definitely takes a more 
romantically relationship driven approach than I thought it was going to but I didn't mind that once I realized what was happening so I really liked this I thought it had a lot of interesting like background lore for the characters for the different types of magic that there are and I really enjoyed it and I was looking forward to the second one I gave Shadow of Night two stars um, I don't want to give any spoilers plot wise oh I forgot um, a discovery of souls is about a witch who is doing research in Oxford who uncovers a an enchanted book that all the different types of magical creatures want to get so she and a she her name is Diana Bishop and a vampire named Matthew Claremont kind of set out to refine the book and find out why people are trying to get them to get to the book and fall in love on the way. I don't want to spoil this. I thought it really stalled the plot. I think I want to do a video that's like a spoiler discussion of the trilogy. So I think I'm going to do that. But I just feel like this book was very slow and it slowed down the plot and it didn't really add that much to the story. The third book was a little bit better than the second book. I think I'm gonna give it three stars. The first half also kind of slow, but the second half definitely picks up once things like start to actually happen, which they should have been happening the whole time, but that's just me. Lastly, I read another library book and this is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. So I actually read this before I read A Book of Life, but I really wanted the trilogy to be together. Um, but I read this in about two sittings. I think I read like 80 pages the first time I sat down and then like the whole rest of it the second time I sat down. And I thought it was really cute. It wasn't very complex. It was a very simple way of writing. It was a very simple way of characterizing the characters. I don't know when this came out, but it felt very like 2011. 2015 wow um this book is about a girl named fair who starts out she kills a fae and as punishment is brought back to live in the fairy realm this didn't really bring anything new to the table i liked the plot twist like the reveal at the very end i've seen something like it before but not so early in a series so i'm really interested to see how that is going to play out and i'm definitely going to continue i have a lot of mixed feelings about sarah j mass because i enjoyed this for what it was but a lot of people on booktube have said that like they'll get into a series and then part way through sarah j mass will change the premise kind of of what the series is about um I don't really know how I feel about that. I feel like I just want to read this entire series as well as the, what is it called, Throne of Glass series out of curiosity. And I might also do a video about that, like books I want to read out of curiosity. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. I thought it was really cute. I think I gave it four stars. Yes, I gave it four stars. And that is the all the books that I read in March and April. I hope you enjoyed watching my video and I'll see you next time. Bye.